Hello everyone, my name is Kiva and I teach people how to achieve the luxe look for less. In today's video, we're talking about five more impractical home decor and furniture items that you need to think twice about before buying. I'm not saying don't buy them, but you need to know these little facts that no one talks about to make an educated decision. Before we get into today's video though, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And if you want me to design your home, click the link in my description box for my virtual design sessions. Now let's get into today's video. So I done this video before, I talked about some items that you should buy or you shouldn't buy, it doesn't really matter to me, but I talked to you about the pros and cons because there's so many furniture pieces that are popular online, but what about actually living with these people? You guys know me, this channel is all about home decor and interior design for real people. So let's jump right in. The first item I wanna talk about today is the rainfall shower. So I know, whenever you go to a luxury hotel, whenever somebody's like, ugh, I'm upgrading my bathroom, they always get the rainfall shower. And the idea is really cool, right? You have this really nice long um, shower head that sticks out over you and it's gonna get you nice and wet and it just looks beautiful. Let's not even talk about practicality. It just looks super nice. It really um, elevates and elongates your shower, which is really nice because sometimes showers look really nice and cramped and small. And plus, unless you're standing in the corner, you are very, very dry and it's the worst. Especially, I don't know, if you're married or something like that you guys like to shower together there's always one person who is freezing cold in the shower and when you have a rainfall shower that doesn't happen quite as much so there's a plus there an impractical portion of this rainfall shower though is that you are always wet so you're like Kiva aren't I in a shower isn't the point to be wet yes but sometimes people don't wash their ha hair every day sometimes you don't want to wash your face while you wash your body and every other part of your body maybe you want to do that in different steps maybe you want to wash your face first and then wash your legs second you know when you have the rainfall shower you kind of lose um, the the decision making power the shower decides for you right because it's positioned directly over your head or directly over where you'd like to stand and there is no thing you can do to not get wet because it just goes right down on your head so it makes it really hard to wash your face to do your shower routine in different segments I, I know you're like Kiva what let me, let me break it down a little bit further it gets your hair wet immediately and that means the entire time you're in the shower there is water streaming down your face I, it's like being stuck in a rainstorm you're like i just want to be able to see and then you can't see the shampoo is guaranteed to get in your hair i don't know about you but when you think about normal showers you can kind of lean your head back and the shampoo can run down your back it just kind of easier to deal with. So while the rainfall showers look nice, they aren't the most practical. Something else that I really struggle with with the rainfall shower is how do I wash my face? Unless I make my face actually parallel with the rainfall shower, I cannot wash my face as well. I'm just kind of like hoping that I can lean back far enough and not fall over to wash my face. Now, a lot of the times they accompany a rainfall shower with those handheld little showers, but I would like to be able to split the difference. I would like to be able to get completely wet, but also do what I need to do without being constantly wet uh, or constantly wet all over. It's just a minor thing, but it's actually something that I really don't like. I used to think I wanted to update my shower and put these really nice attributes in there, but you couldn't pay me at this point to do that. So you can definitely put that in your shower. It's really nice to look at, and sometimes it's really nice when you really just wanna relax and kind of have a spa day in your shower, but it isn't the most practical thing to have at all points in time. So if you're gonna invest in that, just know that you are never, ever, ever going to have dry hair ever again. Now, the next impractical home decor item that is super controversial is the wool rug. So I love wool rugs. Wool rugs are fantastic because they are durable, they have thick pile, and they almost always are super beautiful. They sell wool rugs at Crate and Barrel, Pottery Barn, Restoration Art House, all of your luxury stores. You can even buy wool rugs from your local rug dealer. We all know wool is a great fiber. It is, it is very, very high quality. And you know that because when you're buying wool rugs, they are almost always more expensive than any other rugs than you would buy and that's a good thing they are durable they're going to last for years to come and that's what we want in furniture we're investing in we don't want to have to keep buying it year after year after year now all of that being said the downside of the wool rug is that they shed you know wool rugs shed so much you're like is this a farm in my house am I a farmer is my name Old McDonald? And the answer 99.9% .9 of the time is no, but they do shed a bunch. Now, 
The shedding also happens with the, the varying degrees of quality, but most wool rugs on the whole do shed between three and six months. That means you have to do a ton of vacuuming. There is a lot of hair around. It's like having a dog that sheds, but it's a rug. You don't really get the satisfaction of having a dog to, dog to cuddle with you. So once you get past the three to six months for a lot of rugs, it's not a problem anymore, but you do have to be aware of that for the maintenance sake. When you come into your home or when people come into your home, it might sometimes look dirty, right? Because you have all these clumps that are coming up as the rug is shedding. So that's just something to be aware of. And a lot of the times I find that electronic vacuum cleaners, so like your Roombas or your iRobot or whatever they are, they don't work on these carpets. They get stuck. So it's something that you really have to do by hand with a really strong vacuum. And 10 out of 10 times, it actually has to be a plug-in vacuum because even the handheld ones really can't do what needs to be done. So that's not saying don't buy a wool rug. They're super good quality. I almost exclusively buy wool rugs, but I do know that I have to do with it, deal with the shedding. So I'm vacuuming those new rugs every day, every other day. Um, at the very least, it's just a lot of maintenance up front. And I think it's something people don't talk about because when I read those reviews on all those websites, people are like, oh, the shedding is horrible. Why didn't anyone tell me? It happens with wool rugs. So you kind of have to make the decision there. Now you could definitely get a cheaper rug that might look just as nice um, and it doesn't have the shedding, but it may not have as thick of a pile or it may not look as ornate. So you kind of have to decide which thing is worthwhile to you and make your decision based off of that. To prevent this from happening, I say look at the care details on every rug online before you buy it. West Elm, for example, they have like a care meter on their website and it'll tell you if something is low maintenance or high maintenance and they'll also tell you how to take care of it so that you just know what you're getting into before you make the purchase. You're not going to always get this information when you're buying rugs at places like Home Goods or something like that. So just do your research, look at the quality of the rug, look at what the rug is made of before deciding if you are going to bring it home. It looks beautiful long term, but it is a ton of maintenance. I'll try and insert a clip of one of my rugs here now. It's just shedding like crazy and it gets all over my dog and all over my clothes and I hate it, but I knew that going into it. So I just made a decision that I felt was educated. We all know that sconsors are super, super popular right now. Sconces are fantastic. They add decor to your walls. They add lighting. They are, they're very sculptural, right? The sconces now, they have such interesting shapes, interesting lights that they give out. Sconces are the best. They add so much detail, especially if you're a minimalist or there isn't like art that you really love and you want to add some flair. Because again, we always want to carry our design upwards and lighting is one of the best ways to do that. And a lot of people now are using sconce above their nightstands, above their beds, um, above their sofas. There, there are a variety of uses for sconces, but something that people don't always consider when it comes to the sconce is depth. So the sconce, the light has to go somewhere, right? It doesn't just stick on the wall and then just disappear, right? <laughs> and it doesn't go into a black hole. It has to exist in your space. So something you need to think about is the depth of that light. Something that happens um, in my home all the time is my wife. She's very, very tall. She's very, very tall. So whenever we have lighting, I have to think about how she's going to stand up and if she's going to hit her head. And it happens a lot of the time with um, sconces because they stick out very far. So when you're buying a sconce, you have to be um, very aware of who's living in your house, how high you're going to hang these lights, and how deep these lights can be. Because while you may want a sconce, it may not look nice in your house because you might have to hang it so high that it kind of looks out of place relative to where it should go. Or you might have to hang a scotch somewhere that is a little bit more practical and not exactly where you want to put it. For example, people love putting them over sofas nowadays. They get like maybe one swing arm sconce that kind of extends over, but it does go out into space, right? So if, for example, if you're putting it on like a wall that you see when you turn around a corner, it's kind of going to look off because the, the light is going to kind of like extend out into the room and everything else is going to be flush. So you really have to think of not only the placement of the sconce in terms of a Aesthetics, but also in terms of practicality. Another alternative is just to opt for um, sconces that are a little bit more flush. So instead of something that's swing arm, you could opt for something that has a globe or really just sits on the wall or is semi flush and has a cool design without taking up additional space. Because one of the good things about lighting is that it adds something without taking up space, but these big sconces do take up space. So it's just something that I do want you to be aware of so that you don't hit your head um, and so that your place doesn't look off balance because balance is super important in a space because when a space is asymmetrical or there's no balance, it doesn't really feel homey and it doesn't feel super cohesive.
Something else I always see online is like West Elm or Amazon. They'll have these sconces over your nightstands and they look really nice, but they're showing it from, from a specific angle. But when you're looking at the side angle, you don't want your sconce to extend further past your nightstand because you're like, what is it illuminating? It's illuminating the floor at that point. Put a light on the floor. It's not actually illuminating anything that would be helpful to you. Again, if you don't get sconces that kind of rotate, if it sticks out just directly over your nightstand and you can't turn it, it's not actually going to illuminate what you're doing in bed. So you can't read or watch TV or whatever it is you're doing with additional light. So placement is really important so that you can um, fulfill the utility of the item and also not get injured. So you just have to be really intentional with your placement for practicality's sake. Now, everyone knows this one, but I have to talk about it. The next impractical furniture item is anything that has a glass top. Um, glass tops are the bane of my existence. And that's not to say that I don't enjoy looking at them. They look great, but they require a ton of maintenance. Even if you don't have any kids, right? You don't have to have kids to have fingerprints, right? We all have fingerprints. So fingerprints on top of furniture um, can really mess up the entire game. It can be the most beautiful, expensive glass table in the world, but when you have fingerprints all over it, it kind of looks ugly, it looks dirty, right? And I say this every single video, you can say it with me, there's been no dirty homes in Architectural Digest, in Vogue, in Elle Decor, and any of those ma magazines, dirty is not in, dirty will never be in. If it is, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I, I think I'm just gonna stop designing if that comes in. Um, but dirty is not in. So we don't want those fingerprints, but fingerprints are natural. What are you going to do? Every time someone comes over, just have like Windex and like a holster on your belt. That is so impractical. You're not going to do something like that. The other downside of the glass top furniture is a lot of the times it can move. So if you have kids, if you have pets, if you are just clumsy, you're running the risk of that glass breaking and hurting you. And we never, ever want that. You should feel safe in your home. You should be able to run around and do whatever it is you want to do without feeling like your furniture is going to tip over and hurt you. So that's one of the other reasons to not get the glass top furniture. I'm not saying that you can't secure your glass top furniture, but it does happen, especially when you're finding things on Facebook Marketplace. Same thing happened to me. I bought a coffee table that I love, but um, you know, if we're running around, we like to play badminton in our house. We love to play badminton like on the other sides of the living room. And when we're doing it, it's just kind of a risk and we're not going to stop playing badminton because it's fun and you should have fun at home. So we just have to secure a coffee table better or get one that doesn't have a glass top. The last reason that I am anti-glass furniture or the last reason you just need to think before investing in glass furniture is something people don't talk about, but you can see through the glass. So that is a very, very good thing if you're dealing with a small space, right? Because it is creating an illusion that space is not being occupied and that's what we want when we're dealing with a small space. But something else you need to consider is whatever you have underneath that coffee table is what you're going to see through the coffee table. So you have to make sure that the legs are really pretty or that the rug that you you have is really robust and is going to add some really strong element of decor and you have to make sure that whatever you have on your rug and whatever is being shown underneath the bottom of that coffee table complements whatever you're putting on top of that coffee table. You have to be a little bit more intentional with matching your decor that you're going to put on your tabletops with what you have underneath the table or the legs of the table because they kind of meld right into one another. So I will actually say stylistically it's a little bit more effort to kind of make a glass table fit in. Now you can add trays or um, runners to kind of prevent this issue but again it just requires a little extra thought. So for those three reasons I just say think a little bit more before you decide to buy a glass top anything. It's just like a lot of effort but it might work for you especially if you're in a small space so just be sure to take care of it well, get that Windex on your belt and also be sure to be really intentional with your styling and do it in a way that complements your rug, complements the table, and really continues your color scheme in a very cohesive way. The very last item that might be impractical is the rustic pot. So rustic pots are super in, right? Restoration Hardware made it popular. Studio McGee made it popular. We love these rustic vessels. They're oversized. They add character. They're kind of inspired by the vintage, and vintage is very, very in this year. There is nothing wrong with them. They are immaculate. You guys know me. I have an actual vessel problem. I collect vessels for sport. That's what I do as a hobby. I love vessels. With that being said, age vessels, they come with a myriad of issues. One, they flake off a lot. 
when you have the nice true rustic vessels, the ones that have some age on them, they have a lot of portions that have um, texture and detail, all of that. Even the ones that you DIY with maybe the baking soda or with dirt, they flake off, which means you have to clean your surfaces. You have to make sure that when you're setting them on surfaces that you're not scooting them along because it might scrape what you have because they have an actual level of texture that hasn't been cured correctly or um, really sealed super well so that it doesn't damage what you're dealing with already. So that's just something to be attentive of. It also just requires a little bit extra cleaning because things do fall off. So you have to, when you're moving things around, if you're hitting, bumping up against something, you have to make sure you have a handheld vacuum or you have your microfiber towels around to keep it looking really nice and pristine. Another downside of the rustic vase is they're actually really difficult to style around if you have a ton of them, right? Because they're all slightly different. When you're buying these rustic vases, you're not going somewhere and they have, you know, 10 copies of the same vase. They're all unique and unique is fantastic, but one of them might have a little bit more red. Another one might have a little bit more green or brown or anything like that. So you have to be really, really aware of your color scheme and look for the colors that you have in your home in those vases before you bring them home because it can actually throw things off. Just because something is rustic and has texture doesn't mean it actually works with your design style. But you have to make sure that the vase has colors that actually works with your home and has textures that work with your home. Something else you have to think about with these rustic vases or with vases in general is that you have to think about the diameter of the opening. And I know this is such a simple thing, but we love to bring vases home, they're amazing. But we have to think about, are we going to put something in this vase, right? Um, and some people are like, let me just go buy all these vases. Will the flowers you wanna put in there fit? Will the greenery actually fit? Is it scaled correctly to your home? What I would probably say, instead of actually buying true rustic vases, buy vases that look rustic but are new. For example, the uh, Joshua vase from Pottery Barn, that vase is my jammy jam. I talk about this vase all day long. I talk about this vase like it is a member of my family. I love this vase. Um, and what I love about this vase is that it adds a really interesting shape because it has some curvature to it. It has handles on it, so it looks a little bit more rustic and it actually has the ability to carry and travel very well. Um, it has some variations in color, so it's very much so black, white, and a little bit of gray. Um, and those color variations are very consistent there is no hint of red. There is no um, little like a glimmer of red. There's none of that. Um, it's very, very clear in its color scheme, but it still does look rustic because it has those color variations and everyone pretty much looks exactly the same. So you know exactly what you're going to get. So you know that when you buy this vase, it's going to fit whatever it is. This vase also, nothing falls off. Even though it looks rustic, it is just look. It is how they made it. It is cured very well. It was made very well. There's nothing flaking off. There's no upkeep. You don't have to vacuum if anything. You don't have to wipe down anything. You don't have to worry about this vase scratching any of your surfaces. You are good to go when you have this vase. And last but not least, it has a huge opening. It has a very massive opening, so you can put any type of branches or greenery that you want in there. And this is such a simple thing, but we want to make interior design easy. If you're not hiring a designer, you're not a designer, and that it's not something that you love doing, that's okay. That doesn't mean you don't deserve a beautiful home. You do, and so does everyone else in the world. So we want to make design easy. So instead of buying these rustic vases, these ones that have upkeep, that you have to be really intentional about, just buy the ones that are made to look that way. It makes it easier. They're not going to scratch anything, and you will be good to go. Okay guys, those were five more impractical home decor and furniture items that you need to think about before buying. Again, this is not a don't buy this, don't do that. I want you to do whatever makes you happy in your own home, but I want you to make educated decisions so that you are putting your hard earned money exactly where it needs to go. If you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out at Instagram. And if you want me to design your home, click the link in my description box for my virtual design sessions. Until next time, have a beautiful day.